Hey, what's up guys, MKBHD here, and welcome back to Dope Tech. I'm super into doing more of these, especially for 2020, but while we're wrapping up 2019, let's just get right into it. So Dope Tech is for some of the most awesome, incredible, or just fun or interesting pieces of tech that I've discovered or bought or had an experience with that I think are worth sharing. And the first one that I'm gonna share with you guys is this guy. You might have seen it. It's the Samsung Galaxy Note 10, but it's clearly not just any Note 10. It's the Star Wars edition Note 10. You might think I'm just into it because it's red and black. And i not gonna lie, that's, that's a part of why I'm into it. But this is really a super legitimate Star Wars themed phone. Like we've seen a lot of special edition phones over the years. And in fact, I have a video coming up of a pretty wild special edition phone that's unlike anything I've ever seen before. But this one, really fully leans into the dark side of the Star Wars universe right from the unboxing experience. So I'll leave actually Lou's unboxing video linked in the description because he did a really good one. And then when you get to the phone itself, they really went next level. There's a red ring around the camera and the, the buttons, as you can see, that's pretty basic. But then you've got the logo of the first order around the back. And then in the software itself, there's a dark theme. It comes with a wallpaper of the red and black helmet. And even the sounds the phone makes are all very Star Wars-y. Now I typically mute my phone, like as soon as I take it out of the box, I don't use the sounds, but if you wanna be this guy on the subway, you can be this guy. But really the cherry on top is uh, the stylus. The stylus is red, like a Kylo Ren's lightsaber. I think it looks pretty sick, and now you can feel like some type of Jedi when you're using the air commands with the red lightsaber stylus. And when you pull it out the phone every single time, it's gonna make you feel like you're uh, pulling out a lightsaber and putting it back. So they've really thought a lot about this. I, I think a lot of people are going to see the movie right about now, so this is something they've gotten really into. Um, but I'm just really excited for next year's potentially high refresh rate Galaxy Note 11. But that's beside the point. The point is this is a special edition phone and I think they've done a really good job with it. Star Wars Edition Note 10. All right, next up, Colorware is finally shipping their painted AirPods Pro. So if you've watched the channel for a while, you've known about Colorware, I've talked about them, about how they precisely take apart, repaint, customize, and put back together various electronics and new stuff as it comes out. And so as soon as the AirPods Pros got announced, I immediately turned to them and I was like, are you guys gonna do the thing where you paint the AirPods Pros? And they said, yep. So now here they are. And of course, they'll do any color. They have a bunch of colors on their site, but I had to go with matte black everything here because, I mean, who am I, really? Uh, matte black case here, matte black earbuds. Uh, and you know, I'm just into making them really hard to find if I lose them. So the things that aren't painted are the inside of the case, which I don't think is that big of a deal, and then the rubber tips on the earbuds, of course, which means you're gonna have this sort of contrast now between whatever color you paint the AirPods and the actual rubber tips, making them look that much more like a Pokemon. Now, I'm gonna share a video in the description of someone who sort of did this themselves with AirPods and plated them gold and surprisingly put them all back together and got them to be fully functional. That is more of a super fun artistic video that I think is worth checking out, but it's just sort of impressive to admire that these still work. The squeeze function in the tip still works, the air channel pass through, the impressive noise cancellation, everything is, just about how you'd expect, just a new color. I think really the main reason you have them painted is so that they look different in your ears. The case is sort of a nice bonus that so you can also get this painted. So if you have more than one on a table, you know which one's yours immediately, but yeah, the, the look in your ear is what you're doing it for. So my AirPods Pros are matte black now, no regrets. I'll make sure to link these and, and everything else I talk about in this video in the description right below that like button. Okay, next up is this guy. So big shout out to Rene Ritchie for cluing me into this. This was his favorite piece of tech in that big end of the year collab we did for favorite tech of the year. This is the Oculus Quest. So this is a standalone VR headset. So you might've seen something like the Oculus Rift, which uh, requires a PC to plug into, or you might've seen something along the lines of like slotting your phone into one where the phone does all the powering and all the display. Uh, this is sort of a happy medium in between those. So this is the headset, and you might've seen some others that look somewhat like it. Oh my God, I'm in the world already. But there's a couple different sensors built into the outside of it, so there's no trackers that have to be placed around the room or the space you're in. Um, and the headset itself has got the adjustable headband and everything about it gets you nice and snug, as you'd expect. And thankfully it charges via USB type C. It also has speakers built in and they're pretty close to your ears so you don't need headphones. But 
What they've done is they tossed in some headphone jacks. And when I say jacks, I'm being plural. It has two, one on each side. And so you can use your own headphones and get really immersed. So I was playing these with noise canceling headphones on top of the headset. So that's like that next extra step to get really immersed in this world. But the difference maker for this quest is since there's no trackers, you can just get to an open area, whatever room you wanna be in, set this thing up, and you're just sort of free to move around in this world with this battery powered headset on. And the setup is actually really sick. You put it on in an area that you're not configured in yet and the sensors on the outside light up and essentially give you this pass through so now I can see the camera, hi, and lets you draw the space that you're in literally around you as like a safe zone, they call it a guardian. So once you've drawn that outline, then you have that room to move around and it keeps track of it, puts up the virtual walls, calibrates the floor and you're set. And then once you're into the gaming, it is still really impressive. To my eye, while it's not perfect, latency is still pretty low, frame rates are high. It does a pretty good job of filling my field of view. And I was impressed with basically how well it stayed tracked. And I never really noticed it losing positioning at all. And I really like the controllers too. So the ring around the, the buttons, they help you stay positioned. And based on what buttons you're holding and what your fingers are doing, the hands in the game will mimic like exactly what your hands are doing in real life down to the finger position. So of course I had a great time playing some of my favorite VR games. Beat Saber and Super Hot are right off the top, I'll like the first ones I recommend for anyone trying to play these. I'm gonna go ahead and try a bunch of new ones now that I have this since there's like 50 more titles in the Oculus store. Um, but yeah, you can just download the Oculus app on your phone and then add them one by one to your library and try them out. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I got really into this. I think this would be an incredible last second gift for someone that you really, really like. Uh, so if you're still in that gift shopping mode, I'll have a link below. So of course, big shout out to Renee for recommending this and a huge thanks to Oculus for sponsoring this portion of the video. Okay, last but certainly not least is this monster. This is an 88 inch 8K OLED TV made by LG. So as you can tell, it's brand new. We just got it in the studio and holy crap, is it impressive. So a couple quick facts. Number one, it is the largest OLED display currently in production that you can actually buy right now at 88 inches diagonally. And number two, it's 8K, which means it's 7680 across by 4320 down, which makes this total 33 million pixels. That means this is a 33 megapixel screen. So there's already a lot of good looking 4K displays and 4K OLEDs everywhere, no doubt. This is clearly next level, but it's also not gonna be maximized by pretty much anyone. The current version of HDMI doesn't support 8K through a single cable. There's almost no 8K content on TVs or on YouTube or Netflix or anything like that. So getting something like this today for the $30,000 that it costs definitely makes it more of a high-end statement piece, but also like clearly bleeding edge. But even knowing all that, it's still really impressive to look at because number one, it's huge. I think even an 88 inch 4K OLED would look incredible, but it's just a massive panel. But then also number two, while we're sort of waiting for all this 8K stuff, this thing is gonna do its best to upscale and make sub 8K content look better. If you go on LG's website to see how this works, it's not super scientific or explanatory. You know, there's some obvious processing involved. They have two diagrams with two levels of enhance, enhance. Enhance, enhance. Enhance. But what matters at the end is the results. And these speak for themselves. Now obviously you're watching this through my camera and then through YouTube processing and then through your screen. So there's almost no way you can fully appreciate what we're looking at here. But even through all that, I feel like you can get the idea that the brightness and the contrast and the colors and just the sheer size and resolution of this TV are on another level. It costs as much as a car. You know, but for people who are into tech, they might just want this more than a car. And that's what makes it dope tech. This is only the second 8K display that's ever been in the studio. The first one was that Dell 8K monitor from a while back, which was the first one that I could ever see the 8K footage we shoot on an 8K screen. And that was incredible. But I mean, an 88 inch screen, is just different. A lot of the same funny quirks happen here too. If you plug in the 8K display into a computer and try to game at 8K, scaling can be weird with some games and most graphics cards will refuse to cooperate. 
but it's still gonna look great. Upscaled, high resolution, thanks to LG's tech, and I'm very impressed that I can actually tell the difference. So there you have it. All I know is this is gonna make an incredible first piece of tech to move into the new studio space that we're planning for early 2020. That is really exciting, but I think every dope tech piece on this list earns its spot here for its own reason. So that's been it. Thanks for watching this episode. Onward with Tech Sember. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.